All right, I am sorry for that technical problem. We are live back up and I hope this stays till the end. Uh, so please go ahead and uh, get those uh, viewers back on screen. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a lot of grace today. I won't wait till that number. I will, uh, in a short while, go ahead and do the presentation and uh, expect others perhaps to watch uh, right after the presentation to, to watch the recorded version of this. But uh, I like the pace at which I see the numbers growing now. Please go ahead and uh, keep on hitting that share button again. I got a very important announcement to make uh, to you today. Very, very important. If you live on ground zero, this is good news for you. Really, really good news for you. So uh, go ahead and get the numbers back up. I see they are growing really rapidly. Thank you for doing so. If you're just joining, uh, go ahead and hit that share button. Now, I got a few announcements to make why we grow the numbers. First, this is very important for anybody living in Barfoot. We are passing out an alert, an emergency alert to everybody living in Barfoot, La Republique du Cameroon troops had a meeting today. Now listen to me very carefully. La Republique du Cameroon administrators in Bamenda had a meeting today. And in the meeting, they have resolved to launch an offensive in Barfoot so we are reaching out to everybody in Barfoot. If you live in the Barfoot urban areas, please look for where to go. This is very, very important. La Republique du Cameroon is launching a strong offensive in Barfoot to arrest people, young people. Please, if you live in Barfoot, Look for a place to run to before they reach out and pick you up and arrest you. Do not stay in your home. If you live in Barfoot, do not, do not stay in your home. Again, there was a meeting today by the military, uh, colonial military in Bamenda, and they are launching out probably going to be the worst of killing that we have known in the history of this struggle, especially for Barfoot people. So if you are a resident of Barfoot, please get out of that place before they get to you. They will be ruthless. They will be ruthless on any human thing, on any human that moves. So if you live in Barfoot again, this warning is for you. Move out of Barfoot, especially if you live in the immediate urban area. Move out of the place before La Republique du Cameroon comes in to devastate the place. This is authenticated information. They had a meeting to this effect to plan this assault that they are bringing on Barfoot. If you have a relation in Barfoot, uh, or anybody living close to Barfoot, please send this message out to them. Let them leave. Let them leave. Let them move out of the immediate urban areas in Barfoot before the troops from La Republic move in to uh, decimate, to burn the area as they have done in many other towns and cities uh, or many other towns and villages in the southern Cameroon. So please take this very seriously. Take this very, very seriously. And I also want to warn any parent sending a child to school. The interim government has warned uh, in previous communications about the insecurity out there. La Republic du Cameroon troops are out there to pick up your children. Take them to unknown destinations and kill them. If you love your child, please keep them home. If possible, hide them. Get to the bushes as others are doing. 
La Repokru de Cameroon assumes that every school going age child is the one attacking the air troops. And they are waiting for those children to get into the schools, get into the colleges, so they come around and pick them up or shoot them and kill them. We have seen what has happened just in a few days, three days after schools were announced open. We have seen principals killed. We have seen teachers killed. We have seen students killed. We have seen some picked up. Do not want to be a victim. You don't want to be a victim. So please, I come to you encouraging you, get your children out of any school. It is not safe. It is not safe for you. And again, as I mentioned here before, this interim government is not going to guarantee the security or safety of any child or any teacher or any school that open its doors for, uh, for classes. So please, we do not have that authority because French Cameroon forces are the ones on the ground bringing intimidation, harassment, torturing, killings, and of course, abductions. We cannot vouch for the protection of your kids. Get them away from any school that you know is not safe. And for any school that is open, uh, like Ambazonians, listen to me. Any school or college that is open, that opens its doors, any so-called La Republic institution, government schools, colleges open, doing business, any college, any school that instructs its students to pay school fee that goes directly into the coffers of La Republic du Cameroon instead of the interim government, the immediate community, the local government for the running administration of that school, that school will be shut down. Any school, listen to me again, any school, any college that allows students to go pay school fee directly into the coffers of La Republique du Cameroon or their treasury, that school will be shut down. No school that operates in Ambazonia pays school fee to La Republique du Cameroon. It's a law, a law of the land. We want every parent to know this. And don't think that we will not know. If your child is going to any government school, we know where you are paying the school fee. We will stop that school and we will stop anybody from going to that school so far as that money does not stay within that school to manage that school. We have schools in our communities without classrooms, without desks, without chairs, teachers going for years, three years, two years without a salary. And they are being told, children, pay your school fee directly into the treasury, into the coffers of La Republic de Cameroon, so they can take that money and launch their assault, buy war equipment to come back to destroy our children, destroy our territory. That will never happen. That dispensation is over. That dispensation is over. And every timber, we see timber is still going out to La Republic de Cameroon. Every general in this, in Meme, in Faco, where timber passes through. Please listen to the sound of my voice. Timber must be stopped. Oh yeah, tankers must be stopped going to uh, colonial capital, uh, economic capital in Douala or Yaoundé. We cannot continue to sing annexation and see them continue to move our resources, our resources from our territory to their territory. They benefit out of it, we benefit nothing. Thank you. We have gone over 500 and I have a very, very important breaking announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, if you live on ground zero, I want to formally announce to you from this platform that ABC, Ambazonia Broadcasting Corporation, is now on satellite on ground zero. 
I believe as I speak to you right now, if you are on ground zero, you can watch me on ABC. ABC for the first one month, which means throughout the month of September, will be going through a test period. And after the one month, we will then unpack it, the regular programming for ABC. So again, congratulations, ground zero, you have ABC right now with you. You don't need to do anything. If you are already receiving SCDC, there is nothing you need to do. Just get your remote and search through, look for ABC and Bazonia Broadcasting Corporation. You will find it. You will see me right now as I come to you. That is good news. We promise you ABC is going to be the best, unbeatable out there. We will bring you programs, educative program, informative programming, entertainment that, that take away stress from you. So please, get on your remote, dive, search for ABC on your satellite. Again, if you are already receiving SCBC, all you need to do is get your remote, look through the channels, search through the channels, and you will find ABC. That is what we promise to deliver. You stay behind, sit there, have fun, and enjoy it. Uh, that was a breaking announcement I promised bringing to you. And I hope that Ground Zero is excited. Please, let me know, let me know, put up some uh, information here on the platform. If you are on Ground Zero and you can find it, let me know. Put up some information here. Let me know, please. Kim B. Burnett, thank you for joining from uh, United Arab Emirates. Helen Fufu says, thank God. Yes, I see uh, AJ Taku says, finally, Grand Zero can watch now. Yes, sir. Grand Zero can watch ABC right now as I speak. I see Claude Ingang should be for revolutionary messages only for now, not entertainment. No, uh, Claude, it's, it's a good idea. Revolutionary messages, you can believe that if we do that, it will it become very boring. ABC is a full flush TV. You're going to find some people on this channel that you will be like, wow, how come they are here? But I can assure you, as long as they told the editorial policy, so long as they told our editorial policy, we're going to have every ambassador and we'll have something to offer, show up on this channel to uh, do presentations. Uh, I also see in Kong Yu Safa, I say, great news, thank you. Sibia and Nadam, I see, I see you. I also see uh, Bonnie McLeary watching from Bowie, thank you, sir. I also see uh, uh, Austin Augustino, uh, sad news, we need what? Sticks, Chris. Well, it's not sad news, you got sticks. You got sticks, you got enough sticks, and you need more, you will get them. I see Mirabo, Kavi, Kapi, and he says, is there an app for A, B, for A, B, C? Uh, an app will be coming, you know, this is still work in progress. An app will definitely be coming. Just be a little patient. You will have it on Roku. You will have it on the, uh, permanently, on the, permanently streaming 24-7 on Facebook, on YouTube, on the Apple TV, these things will come. They will happen, but it takes time for them to happen. So please, uh, just be a little patient with us. I also see uh, Nicole Nat. I see uh, C. Cut Judson. I see uh, Gray Eric. Uh, I see uh, indeed. Nico, Nico, ladies and gentlemen, I think I am going to go ahead to do this presentation. I want to believe you go ahead, keep on hitting the share button. Let's hit at the least 2,000 people by the time this presentation is over. 
let's get at least 2,000 viewers by the time this presentation is over because this is very, very, very important. I am going to uh, spend a few minutes at the end to answer any question that uh, you may have. So please get ready. Hit the share button. Let others know I am live. Fellow Ambazonians, it is incumbent upon us at this interim government that once in a while we see the need to come to you and remind you of the difference between this interim government and other groups which are equally at the forefront of this fight for the actualization of the freedom or independence of the Southern Cameroons and Bazonia. Unlike any other group in this restoration crusade, the interim government owes its existence or derives its existence from you, the people of Ambazonia. We are accountable to you. You put us here and you foot the bills of all that we do here at the interim government. As such, it is but necessary that in moments of great revolutionary decisions such as the ones we have taken today, we come to you to explain why we took those positions. The Dalai Lama is quoted as saying that, and I quote, where ignorance is our master, there is no possibility of repeat, end of quote. And the retired CNN journalist Bernard Shaw is on record as warning, and I quote, beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance, end of quote. And speaking of knowledge, the late United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan said this, and I quote, knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is a premise of progress in every society, end of quote. Yes, knowledge is power and information. Factual information is indeed very liberating. And that is exactly what I am set out to bring to you concerning a number of issues that the revolution is having to deal with at this very moment. The cabinet and some other branches of this interim government have taken time to deliberate upon these matters, most especially the collaboration issue, the issue of joint account for all frontline groups, and the constant taunting of restoration forces across the territory by a particular group of defense forces who would want that all other forces on ground zero be conquered and controlled by them. We bring you these explanations in the hope that at the end, you are able to decipher for yourself why the interim government isn't about to compromise on issues of principle. We warn you, as a result of this, there will come vicious attempts at blackmail sabotage, slander. The kitchen sink will be thrown from multiple fronts, including from surrogates who care less about the end, about the results of this struggle, but about position, acquisition, and consolidation. We hope that when they do come, when the attacks do come, you would have been armed with this knowledge. Where I am indeed as to return every word back to sender. Refuse to be fooled by detractors and surrogates who would want everyone to believe that without collaboration, without a joint account, that a revolution is dead or doomed. This revolution will not and cannot be doomed. There will be moments of despair, ups and downs, of course. Moments 
when you feel like we are losing, I can assure you today that when those moments come, God will make a way where there may seem to be no way. Fellow Ambazonians, the AACC, All Ambazonia Consultative for, uh, Forum Conference, and a million man march in Washington, D.C., of just a little over two weeks ago, is certainly still very fresh in your memories. It was a moment of great hope. Call it a moment of resurrection. Resurrection of dreams. Dreams of a united or collaborated front for our frontline movements. The All Ambazonia Consultative Conference was initiated or initiative of the IG. It had one mission to accomplish, that of bringing all the frontline groups to table to begin foundation work for a collaborative platform. No big milestones were expected to be achieved coming out from DC. But it was hoped at least that a platform for collaboration would have been formed rising from there. Going into the conference, the frontline movements or the leaders, seven in number, had held different preparatory meetings days ahead until the meeting proper. In those meetings, they agreed on who was going to be present and what was going to be the agenda. Agreement was equally reached on how funds raised during the event were going to be used. Consensus was that the funds raised would be used to make necessary provisions for ground zero. The interim government financed the entire event, but for the transportation that leaders traveling from out of the USA had to provide for themselves. Other than that, the interim government picked up all the bills from that conference. Collaboration being the focus and dream of the conference, it was hoped that at the least, coming out from there, the leaders would arrive at some areas of collaboration or cooperation going forward. That collaboration would be in the area of projects such as in defense, refugees, legal defense for our leaders in jail, among others. Sad to report today that, other than the resolutions read to your hearing by the leaders, there was no area of collaboration or agreement the leaders were able to agree on, at least not even for the start. And the blame must be rightly apportioned. The leaders of ARG had essentially stated a night proud to the conference that they were only coming there for the Sunday rally and the joint fundraiser. So that discussions in their Friday conclave appeared to be a mere fulfillment of righteous presence and nothing else. This explains why, apart from Comrade Akwanga of the SCYR, Comrade Akuro and Comrade Edwin Ingan of Roa, who showed up for the Saturday main event and actually addressed the audience, no other member, none of them, no other member of the ARC was present on Saturday even when they were all in town in Washington, D.C. They all had promised coming, but never showed up. But they were all happy to show up on the Sunday of the rally for photo ops, as you, as you must have seen. But it appears that that was all as far as collaboration was concerned. Of course, not to forget the fundraiser later, that night. The failure by the leaders to seal any form of collaboration 
can only best be explained from what happened with the phones raised that Sunday night. As I have stated earlier, going into the fundraiser that night, it was pre-agreed that all funds raised would go towards procuring material support for Ground Zero. That was a consensus. However, once the money was on the table, all, all the other leaders suddenly changed their minds and insisted that the cash should be divided amongst themselves, among the leaders or the groups. The excuse from these leaders was that they won't want any, any other group or another group procuring material for their groups. That they prefer taking the cash and doing the procurement by themselves. So collaboration essentially failed, even on day. Even on the subject they had already had consensus on, which was the sharing of the finances. As I speak to you now, the funds raised at that occasion are still sitting somewhere. And for two reasons. Number one, the interim government has insisted that the money cannot be divided as is being demanded by other leaders. The interim government wants the fund to be used exactly for the project it was raised for. The interim government isn't ready to negotiate anything less. Number two, a portion of the funds was given to an ARC member to carry home for security reasons. And instead of returning the fund the following day for processing, he went about trying to open a bank account in another city in the name of an organization that only they know about. As of now, that portion of the fundraiser amounting close to $20,000 of the 50,000 raised still remains unaccounted for. Now, it is very important that I am pointing these things out so that you out there actually understand why things are the way they are and why the interim government is approaching things the way they are so that when saboteurs and uh, blackmailers go there trying to paint this IG Blake, you have a clearer picture of what went on. The problem with collaboration is that the very leaders who trumpeted collaboration up to now have refused to see areas of collaboration. In spite of the many things out there they could be collaborating on. The only area of collaboration they continue to point out is in finance, joint account, they say. They are advocating for a joint account from which everyone can draw from when need be. Their argument is that if you create a joint account, many more people will be brought in to donate for everybody to pull from. But the interim government thinks it is a bad idea and has objected to it. The interim government is insisting that if there must be financial collaboration or any form of joint account, such account must have a project, a project label, not leaders or groups raising funds to divide among themselves after. The position of the interim government is, yes, we can do joint fundraisers and indeed open a joint account. But the fundraiser account must be for joint project. That is, if we must raise money, the money should be used to fund a great project and not having the money divided as is the case or advocacy now. If our refugees need beddings, for example, the interim government's idea for collaboration is this in this area is that, yes, let us come together as a team and raise the money 
and use it to supply burdens for refugees. But others don't agree. Their own idea of a joint account is a situation where funds are raised and the money is shared among the leaders. And each leader takes his portion and does what he wants with it. Fellow Ambazonians, this is the interim government's position. We see many areas we can collaborate in. If other leaders will just agree to lay down self-interest, we all can easily collaborate in the areas of defense, refugees, diplomacy, legal support for our detained leaders. What about events like our national days, massive rallies like the one in D.C., and you can name many more. The interim government is willing to continue discussions on collaboration. As far as the groups agree that sponsoring projects, not sharing money, is the right thing to do. I want to believe this position has been clearly articulated and that you understand the interim government's concerns here. The interim government has a system of checks and balances that ensures accountability and transparency in the ways funds are used. Not every group has this system of accountability. The interim government will not be party to a situation where funds are raised just for individual leaders to carry home, then turn around and employ it for personal purposes because they don't have any, 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 any way or means of accounting for the funds. I have an appeal to you right now. I would like every one of you to weigh in on this subject. Tell us what you think should happen to the funds raised in Washington, D.C. We want to hear your voice. Leave your comment right here for all to see for all to read. If you want the money to be shared among the leaders or among the different groups, let put, uh, insert that comment there, post a comment there and say, you want the money to be shared. But if you want the money to go towards a project, please put that mess, post that message there. Let us also know you want the money to go towards a project and not share. Your voice is very important in this matter. We do not want to be in the habit of calling for events, raising funds, only for people to turn around and ask that we divide the money. The interim government will not do that. And this takes me to this uh, issue of local by local. Now listen to me, I said local by local, not county by county vision that you heard acting president announce yesterday. Again, this is about local by local, not county by county. Of course, the ideas are the same. They will choose to go local by local, not county by county, and I am going to give you some little explanations here. In a few days or a week to come, the interim government shall be ruling out the whole vision behind this local by local or call it local, uh, local government by local government. Let me throw a little light here on it. What local by local or L and L does is that it puts ownership of the revolution into the hands of the grassroots, into the hands of the people who actually own the revolution. L and L, as we call it, or local by local, local government areas, L by L, would empower every local community or local government area in the diaspora to assume leadership of what goes on in their communities on ground zero, most especially in the areas 
of defense reporting to the interim government which is the overall authority local by local would allow each local government area to shoulder the financial responsibilities for the liberation and defense of your immediate community assuming you come from tuba for example all the funds raised or coming from tuba diasporans would only go towards funding defense and other projects necessary in the tuba community or local area each local government area pick its leader and all the leaders pick in the local areas within the county then vote their county chairman and the county chairman voted become the kind of administrator of that county in the particular diaspora location they live. He liaises with the interim government and he is in the position to report back to the local government areas how much funds have been raised in each local government area and in the county as a whole. He also reports back to the people how on what projects or project or projects and where money is raised and where money raised is actually being used the system comes with lots of accountability and transparency it also takes care of the prol proliferation of self-defense groups in the county making sure that leadership of any emerging defense group in the county is accounted for and proliferations like those of Atanganji and Ekema Patrick are quickly spotted before they can inflict any harm in the community. It actually takes care of the warlord situation too, that is, quickly becoming a menace in the territory. It takes care of the kind of situation that took place in Batibo lately, where a warlord moves around trying to bully and subdue forces that do not ally with them that scenario shall never never happen again it entails that no military leader owns or manage groups outside specified counties groups in mancon for example remain in mancon those in manu remain in manu except the ASC does otherwise for any reasons. In fact, all defense forces under this arrangement becomes L and L forces or county forces. Every group would have to identify itself in or operate only within chosen local, local areas and such shall have no power other groups in another geographical area it means that the situation where some so-called generals move from place to place intimidating harassing torturing and killing other forces that have no affiliation with them have been totally eradicated fellow ambazonians this is a sketch of what lies ahead. It's time for all of us to take total control of what goes on in our communities. It is time every local government area stands up and drive out terrorist soldiers from their counties or communities. These details may not be very accurate, at least for now, but in the coming days, before the policy is actually ruled out, further details would have been brought to you. You can rest assured that this interim government is working day and night to take us all to Boya. There is no other option. There is no looking back. The international community can delay. They will come eventually. The naysayers can say we will never make it. I can assure you we are gradually making that. It may interest you to know that every city, 
town and village in every county in Ambazonia has already been marked out and assigned with a zip code as it is obtained in the USA. The benefits of this shall be explained later. Before I leave, I'd like to say one thing about the events in Ingi and all of uh, the Njikwa area where conf confrontations have been reported between the Mbororo community or Fulanese and alleged Amber Restoration Forces. I want to assure you watching and listening to me today, we have intelligence today in the sense that the so-called Amber Forces reported in Ngi, Njikwa, Sabga, attacking Fulanese or Mbororos when were actually uh, troops sent in by Atanganji. They were actual La Republic du Cameroon soldiers dressed like our community defense forces attacking the Mbororos community, killing their cows so that the Mbororos community can turn against our self-defense restoration forces. The boys who carry out that attack on the Mbororo communities are not or were not Ambazonia restoration forces. I want to make this very, very, very clear. The interim government regrets the situation and calls on all the parties to sue for peace. Mbororo people are Ambazonians too. They have lived among our various communities in the savannah zone for years and are known to be peace-loving Ambazonians. What happened in Ngi, Sabga, and other communities where Mbororos find themselves was quite unfortunate. It was a plot, a ploy cut out by Yaoundé, by Yaoundé's elite to foment division and confusion among communities that have lived together in peace for years. What happened must never again repeat itself. It must never be allowed to happen. That infiltration by French Cameroon terrorist soldiers must never allow to happen again. Restoration forces in every Mbororo community must be very vigilant as Paul Atanganji and his cronies have been reported as being behind what happened in these places. Restoration forces should protect all Mbororo communities, all Mbororo people, just the same way they will protect all other Ambazonian communities. I, uh, in the same vein, we urge all Mbororo communities, especially the community leaders, to collaborate with the community and particularly the restoration forces to root out infiltrators who are sent to escalate strife in our communities. We can only war as a team in every community. Let's look out for one another. Thanks for tuning in today. I want to believe that this message has been uh, inspiring to you. Uh, you have heard all the pronouncements about collaboration. You have heard all the pron pronouncements on the joint account. You have heard all the pronouncements on the bad table situation. Again, never again would this interim government sit still and see any restoration force come attack or come under attack by anybody, by anybody. That will never, that will never happen again. And those who have been in the habit of doing so, they went to the red dragons, tried to attack the red dragons, they failed. They went to Moyoka, did the same thing. They attacked Soka Death Camps and killed other Ambazonians fighting for the same cause. 
going forward, that will never happen again. And I'm appealing to every Amazonian on Grand Zero, be vigilant. Because those who are going around and attacking others are the same people who are abducting, abducting people and asking for ransoms. We must not allow this practice to continue. Nobody would take ransom is sent by uh, the ASC or the interim government. So those are the enemies. They are enemies of this revolution. I am going to look at your comments. You have a comment, please. Uh, go ahead, put it on your screen. I will be, I will be more than glad to take uh, uh, some of those questions. I have about five minutes, I guess, to uh, give you uh, uh, an answer to any question that you may have. If you have a question, put it on your screen, please. I will be glad to uh, answer your question. In the meantime, I just want to remind you, I am still making the appeal for the campaign to stop elections in La Republique du Cameroon. I have some intelligence which I cannot bring to you now about that election, but uh, I'm waiting for it to, to get uh, to lay hold on the, on, the, on the complete information before I bring to you. So please, I am still making the appeal for the stopping of that election. If you can make a $150 or $50 donation, go to ambazoniafoundation.org. Again, that address is ambazoniafoundation.org. Go to that uh, uh, website and uh, make that donation. God bless you as you do so. Or you can also go to PayPal and try treasure at ambazoniafoundation.org. Again, it is treasurer at ambazoniafoundation.org. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody is asking, Chris, who is going to be held responsible for the $20,000 that I mentioned in my presentation? Uh, thanks for that question. We know who is keeping the 20000 or it's a little less than that but we know absolutely who is keeping it. The fact is that after trying to open to create an account with that money unrelated to uh, the IG or a few other groups, they now are trying to bring back the money into the joint account where the other funds are. So we are hoping that they bring back the funds that they could open the bank account for that close to 20,000, and it will be put in the joint account where the rest of the funds are. Now, once the funds are in that account, the plan of the interim government is all those leaders must go back to the original agreement. And the original agreement was the funds must be used to support our boys on ground zero. Our stance is there can be no sharing of the funds. It has to be used on a project on ground zero. And somebody is asking what percentage of the money has so far been sent? No, nobody, no money has been sent to anybody, sir. No money has been sent to anybody because the other chunk of that money, again, is still out there. And no money will be sent to anybody, as you can hear from me. That money, the leaders must agree to use it on the project they raise it for. I'm sorry, the screen is rolling very fast.
Ladies and gentlemen, I, again, I want to appreciate uh, your tuning in today. I think I will have to end it here. Uh, I will leave you here to brainstorm on these ideas. Remember, it is not county by county. It is local and local. And remember, local and local stands for local government by local government. Good night. God bless you. Grand Zero. You have ABC finally. Let, please give us feedback on what you see. Thank you. God bless Ambazonia.